Hello, my dear students. Uh, let us discuss about the shear strength in uh, uh, detail. Uh, last class, I have mentioned uh, the different types of uh, uh, the shear uh, test. The first one is the direct shear test, and second one is triaxial uh, test, and uh, third one is unconfined compression test, and the field method is the vein shear test. So let us see one by one. Uh, the first one is the direct shear test. This is most suitable for granular soil like the sand or uh, stiff case. Here uh, there will be a box. So you can see here these are the components of the box and this is a porous plate. Okay and this is the preparation of the sand sample, uh, sand specimen. This is the soil and this is the box type uh, box. Okay and um, uh, so then after that it has to be leveled. Uh, the surface has to be leveled and uh, then there is a pressure plate that has to be kept on the top okay uh, so this is the test procedure uh, i think the last already i have explained uh, this in the last class Okay, here uh, this is the pressure plate and steel ball. Through the steel ball, uh, the uh, load will be applied to the soil specimen. Once you applied, here there will be the load uh, on both vertically as well as horizontal. This is normal load and this is shear load. So what happens, there will be a failure. So you can see, see here, there will be a sliding. So once the soil fails, you have to uh, note down the readings. Um, what is uh, the maximum load applied and what is the maximum shear load and based on that may, uh, you have to see what is the uh, value in the proving ring okay here there will be a proving ring it shows the values of where there is a failure of the soil this proving ring, uh, ring stops showing uh, the readings so you have to note down that readings okay this is the whole setup shear box loading frame to apply the vertical load and this is the dial gauge to measure the vertical displacement and dial gauge to measure the horizontal displacement proving ring to measure the shear force then how to analyze this first you have to calculate what is normal stress because uh, uh, that uh, that will be a normal load is applied but uh, that graph is based on normal stress versus shear, shear stress so for that you have to find this normal stress normal stress is equal to load divided by area that is normal force divided by area of cross section of the sample similarly you have to calculate shear stress also that is tau that is equal to shear resistance developed at the sliding surface divided by area of the cross section of the soil sample. Okay, uh, so once if you know uh, uh, this normal stress and shear stress, you can draw uh, this graph. This is the graph uh, shear stress uh, versus normal stress. Okay. If it is a dense sand or over consolidated clay, then graph it comes like this. This is the maximum shear strength that is tau f. If it is a loose sand that is normally consolidated clay, that is uh, tau f is like this. If the graph grow, uh, goes like this. Okay. And uh, if it is a dense sand, okay, then or over consolidated clay, then uh, the change in the length of the sample based on compression and expansion it shows the result like this for the loose sand it is like this normal consolidated k then uh, to find the shear strength parameter, cohesion and friction are the two main important shear strength parameters that has to be calculated using uh, the shear stress graph. So this is the normal graph we usually use to find the C and phi. Okay, so 
how to calculate uh, this we have uh, the normal stress values uh, so uh, normal stress means when you apply the normal load and shear load uh, there will be some readings so when you join all these points you get uh, the uh, line like this this is called as moles coulomb failure envelope and uh, here this is a friction there is no cohesion in this case because this is mainly for sands okay these are all tests are for sand sand is a cohesionless soil sand and gravel is cohesionless soil seat and clay is cohesive soil so sand and gravel there is no seat therefore the graph comes like this okay uh, if uh, it is uh, only a cohesive soil then friction value will not be there only this horizontal line will be there okay this is the uh, in this way you can calculate what is c and phi normal stress versus shear stress and this is called as most coulomb failure and valor so uh, you have to remember some uh, important facts in shear strength that is uh, the sign is cohesion less hence c is equal to zero and direct shear tests are drained and poor water pressures are dissipated hence u is equal to zero in case of direct shear test there is no u u is nothing but poor water pressure that is equal to zero and uh, so in case of uh, uh, sands uh, based on the direct shear test results phi dash is equal to phi and c dash is equal to c that is equal to zero okay and uh, uh, this is the whole setup so finally the uh, shear strength can be calculated using this formula ta, uh, c plus sigma into tan phi but if it is in the case of effective stress then it is tau f is equal to c a plus sigma dash into tan delta delta is nothing but angle of internal friction and sigma dash is equal to sigma minus u pore water pressure has to be deleted from that okay then let us see uh, Uh, the experiment on direct shear test um, direct shear test here uh, this is uh, a little bit uh, difficult and uh, the more popular method and here uh, the cell consists of a high pressure cylindrical cell made of uh, a transparent material um, and fitted between base and top cap and is provided at the base with the inlet or cell fluid okay here uh, the soil specimen is kept inside the triaxial cell with porous plates at top and bottom the loading cap is placed on top porous plate the specimen is enclosed in a rubber membrane to prevent contact with the cell fluid after filling the cell with the fluid mostly water required cell pressure is applied by means of a constant pressure system here you have to remember always that will be a pressure cell pressure is applied all around the system uh, the additional axial force that is called deviated force also applied through the plunger and the deviated force corresponding to differential axial deformations at regular intervals are noted the test continues till the specimen fails here uh you should know this the deviated stress that is represented by sigma d at any stage of the test is given by sigma d is equal to f divided by ac load divided by area but where f is the deviated force and ac is the corrected area of the cross section uh, of the specimen at that stage so sigma 1 is equal to sigma d plus sigma 3 so therefore sigma d is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 this you should remember while solving your numericals with the set of sigma 1 sigma 3 more circle at failure can be drawn the test is conducted preferably a minimum three specimen subjected to different values of cell pressure the more circle at failure is drawn for each specimen and the common tangent touching all the surface will be surface will be uh, failure envelope c and phi are read out from the plot okay so these are the sampling tubes and the sample extruder and um, edges of the sample are carefully trimmed here setting up the okay this is the setting up the sample in the triaxial cell
and the specimen preparation. This is the cell, uh, the, uh, the pressure has to be applied, that is cell is completely filled with the water. This is the setup. Proving ring, this is the proving uh, ring to measure the vertical displacement and this is the proving ring to measure the deviator load. There are uh, mainly three types of uh, tests are uh, conducted in um, triaxial. That is, one is the undrained test and second one is a uh, consolidated undrained test. It is also called a CU test and third one is drained test. So, uh, now let us see in detail what is undrained test. Drainage is not permitted throughout the test. In the case of direct shear test, drainage is not permitted during the application of both normal stress as well as shear stress. In the case of triaxial compression test, drainage is not permitted during the application of both cell pressure and deviator stress. Since the test is conducted fast, allowing no time for either consolidation of sample initially or dissipation of the pore pressure in later stage, the test is also called as quick test or quick undrying test. The second one is unconsolidated, um, sorry, consolidated undrained test. In this type of shear test, the sun specimen is allowed to consolidate it fully. So that's why it is called consolidated fully under initially applied stress and then sheared quickly without allowing the spatial of purple. In the case of direct shear test, the specimen is allowed to consolidate it fully under applied normal stress and then sheared at high rate of strain to prevent dissipation of pore pressure during shearing. In case of triaxial compression test, the specimen is allowed to consolidate fully under applied cell pressure and then pore water outlet is closed and the specimen subjected to uh, increasing deviated stress at high rate of strain. Okay, and the last one is the drain test. Here, uh, in this type of shear test, drainage is um, allowed throughout the test. The specimen is allowed to consolidate fully under the applied initial stress and then sheared at low rate of stream, giving sufficient time for the pore water to drain out on the stage. The test may continue for several hours to several day, uh, days. So that is why this test is also called as slow test. So these three are very important. You should know uh, the uh, three different types of tests under triaxial test, untrained test, consolidated untrained test and um, drained test. Okay. So, um, the last one is the unconfined compression test. It is also called as UC test. Here, the confining pressure is zero in the UC test. There is no sigma 3 that is equal to zero. It can be regarded as a special case of triaxial compression test in which no lateral pressure or confining pressure is applied so that sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 equal to zero in this case. The soil specimen is cylindrical shape with the length about 2 to 2.5 meter times its diameter. The maximum compressive stress resisted by specimen before failure is called unconfined compressive strength. It is denoted by QU and computed as shown below that is QU is equal to F divided by AC. F is the actual compressive force at failure. AC is corrected area of cross section of the specimen at failure. So that is equal to A0 divided by 1 minus E where A0 is the initial area of cross section of the specimen. E is the change in the length divided by original length strain. The shear strength parameter are denoted by Q, U and uh, sorry F C U and phi U. Okay, so this is the different type of test. Here C2 or C3 equal to 0 that you have to remember and this is unconfined compression test. So it is represented by Q U and whatever the shear strength parameter you get that is C U and phi U. Here the load is applied like this only the vertical stress and that sigma 3 equal 
equal to zero. So the graph comes like this: normal stress versus shear stress. Here, a sigma f tau f is equal to sigma one divided by two, that is equal to q u divided by two, that is equal to c u. Okay, this you have to remember. Thank you.